Welcome to it, everybody. This is your edition of In Touch. Now, we have a fantastic weekend of sport ahead of us. Of course, it's the races at the Durban July. It is the Tour de France. Wimbledon is happening. Uh, the PGA, my goodness, there's so much with AFCON. And, of course, the FIFA World Cup Women's Tournament. But let's not forget the big one, the final, the 2019 Super Rugby season. Of course, the showdown going between the Crusaders and the Huagua is this Saturday. It is also 78 days away until the Rugby World Cup kicks off in Japan. If you're tuning in live on Facebook, please use the comment section down below or you can tweet us at Supersport TV with the hashtag SSRugby and also log on to our Supersport TV YouTube channel to check out all previous episodes or you can check out some previous ones on Catch Up. Now, my guest this week is somebody I might just be able to converse with a little bit in Japanese because he's played in the J League. He's played for the Springboks and some provincial teams here in South Africa. He's also a well-known esports athlete and loves his muscle cars. Some people would say that he actually has a resemblance to a young version of the half, but some say otherwise. Let's take a look. Okay. Okay, so this, oh, I know the face, that beautiful long hair. Uh, Brian Kankowski. And what celebrity do you think he looks like? He looks like Carl Drago. I don't know what his Aquaman, which is that oak's name. The, the, he looks like Carl Drago. Just the ultimate compliment, I think. He's a little scar on his eyebrow. Right, Katuelo. Uh, the photo that you're looking at, do you know who that player is? Yes, this is Ryan Kankowski. And um, in my opinion, it looks like it should be he should be the bassist in some band like the Foo Fighters or I don't know very ripped bassist but <laughs> equals bassist. <laughs> All right, Biggie. Based on the photos that you're looking at, uh, who's the player on the on your phone? This is Ryan Kukowski. Uh, who do you, what celebrity do you think he looks like? Bok van Blair with a bit of hair. <laughs> okay. So what celebrity do you think he looks like? Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so based on the photo that I just showed you, who's that player? Uh, Ranko Koski. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, who do you think he looks like? What celebrity does he look uh, like? Long hair, called Jogo. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Ricky, based on the photo that you're looking at, who is that player, number one? Well, I see a picture of someone running down the beach. Definitely David Hasselhoff just strutting his stuff. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, no, definitely. Oh man, that's hilarious. Ryan, welcome to the show. Or should I say the Hoff? Thanks for having me. Yeah, great to be here. it's great to have you. So thank you. You used to get the Hoff a lot, right? Yes. Tell us the story. How did it start? Um, well, Bob's you know, Tobani over there um, at the Sharks when he was there, the one day he rocked up and he just sort of called me Knight Rider, you know, <laughs> and then it, it eventually branched off to David Hasselhoff and then eventually the Hoff stuck. I love it. And it's I been, see it. Yeah, you know, it's been stuck. It's yeah, you know, it's stuck with me for a while now. They yeah, they call me that. So Absolutely it's... love it. Okay, so yeah. the Huff, it's great to have you on the show. We haven't really, well, we don't really know what you're up to at the moment. Like, we check on your social media, but it's always a lovely travel pics. You know, you said recently, October last year, that you're going to take a bit of a break from professional. What's going on? What are you busy with? Where are you? Are you planning on coming back? Um, it's a tough one. So I finished in Japan a year and a bit ago. Yeah. And then. Um, you know, the body took a couple of shots, you know, I've had a good run, started playing when I was 18, you know, I made it till 33, mm -hmm. you know, the wow. professional career, so I was, I, was, career. I was very fortunate, you know, I didn't have any major injuries, but, you know, the body starts hurting, you know, when you're doing that fitness and you've yeah. got to keep doing it, and then, you know, I kind of looked at it like, you know, you can call it time on your own sort of thing, take a break, and then, you know, see how the body feels with a yeah. bit of rest, and, you know, I don't know, I'm enjoying, you know, my own time, I was fortunate to be in Japan for six years. Wow. It helped me um, set myself up in South Africa. Um, what are you doing right now? Well, I got into a bit of property development with a company down in Durban, um, nice. FWJK, the quantity surveying firm. And I, you know, branched into a couple of different, you know, commercial, residential, industrial, and, you know, developed, sold some, kept some, rented some out. So it keeps me busy. Um, Good money in that, hey? I'm oh, really impressed. Well, I'm trying to get into that. <laughs> So I was just very fortunate and, um, you know, a lot of things have worked out for me. So it's, it's afforded me the time to kind of sit back and 
take it easy a bit. Wow, at My, 33? Yeah, I've been lucky. Yeah. Um, Bad, yeah, I'd say <laughs> lucky for sure. Yeah, so I was very fortunate. Um, met a CA, you know, got married. Retirement plan is, you know, put it out there. Nice. And yeah, she's gonna love hearing that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I've just been, a, yeah, I've had an extremely a good run, and I'm happy with it. Because I want to chat to you about that small banner of you getting married, because that is a yes. big thing. But um, before I get to that, you know, everyone knows you as an esport athlete. You represented Energy uh, yes. Esport, which was one of the strongest uh, esports uh, teams in South Africa. Yes. Um, you play PUBG. You yes. play PC. Yes. Any more aspirations of taking that further? Um, you know, there's a fun thing. You know, I do spend a lot of time into it, um, especially while I was playing. It was a nice break from rugby. It took your mind. You know, you don't think about anything else, but yeah. you know what's in front of you. And you know, with a group of friends, we started something, and. You know, the owner of the company, um, Cass, he yeah. invited me to come with some friends and just, you know, have a good time. And he actually did pretty well. You know, we finished like top four out of 16, a couple of competitions. Right. And it was, it was good fun. So I still do it. You still do it. Do you have a Twitch account? Uh, no, 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 no. You, no. I was going to say, I that's another subscribe. Level. <laughs> no, I get too angry with myself. So it's, I don't think it would end very well for me. Um, Fair enough. But it was good. Yeah. We had a great time. Yeah. Okay. But so that is that chapter kind of over? Well, that PUBG section um, ended now. Right. But, you know, I'm still involved with them. You know, there's Dota. There's, there's so many different games that are out there at the moment. So yeah. I do play all of them. Nothing professionally at, like at now. Okay. But yeah, having okay. fun. Fair enough. Killing Fair time. Enough. <laughs> Killing time. Does wifey like it when you play? Does she play along? No, no, no. no she it, hates is it. Is that your thing? She no, no, it. she hates it. Um, As a girlfriend of a gamer, can kind of understand you support yes. and stuff, but I mean, can you go hours and hours without with, with playing? Like 20 hours playing? No, I wouldn't say 20 hours, but okay. it's, it's it's quite easy to get you know sucked in, especially if you're the group of friends, you're all talking to each other, yeah. and you just keep going. But she's kind of said, you know, uh -huh. Yeah, she spends the whole day working, so if she gets home and I'm playing, it's not going to happen. So I do what I want during the day. And Fair enough. Yeah. And then it's, it's time. wifey no, time. No, it's wifey time, so I've got to be Can we speak about wifey real quick? You guys yes. got married. Congratulations. You, it was man. a big affair. Um, it well, seemed like a fantastic day. I mean, we saw two uh, captains, Springbok captains, yes. make an appearance, Sia and Warren Whiteley. Yes. I mean, wow, big day. Yeah, it was fun. You know, it was, yeah, I didn't want it to be too big. Yeah. Um, I think like 140, 150 people, so it wasn't massive. Yeah. And you know, it was just about friends, you know, we wanted it to be a big party and you know, just everyone to relax and have fun. So it ended up being exactly what we wanted. Beautiful. No formal seating, it was just, just the friends flowing, and fun, right? Friends and fun. Beautiful. And it ended up being great. So I, well, I we're it. also friends with Sia, <laughs> I just want to let you know. We were chatting to him recently about a fantastic initiative that Rugby South Africa has put together, which is kind of part of the Stronger Together campaign to the lead up to the Rugby World Cup. It's called Faces Are Numbers. It is so powerful and we are so excited about it. Take a look. Yeah, for me, it comes to this Stronger Together and that's who we are, I think. That's who we are as South Africans and that's what we are known for whenever we have our backs against the wall or whenever we're going through a tough time. As soon as we come together, you know, all the races together, young people, old people come together and we decide to get behind a course or a campaign or like a rugby World Cup. And we've done it in the past and I think we can do it again. But there's nothing more special than a fan while you're sitting at home and you know that you are playing with one of the guys, they they playing with, the, with with your face on the back, and for us as well to look and say, like it reminds me of when, when I was younger, when I was a, when I was a Springbok fan, you know, not playing in the team. If I had the opportunity to know that they carry me in the back and they playing with me, it would mean so much to me. So I can actually relate to this, and it will mean so much to people back at home and to us as a team as well. You know, you look at your jersey when you get it the night before and you have a look in the evening and you see who's there. Like I see Caster, you know, Mini Lamini and DJ Fresh. And you know, it really just gives you more power and it gives you a, a, a home feeling, you know, away from home. And those people know they're behind us at home and in our jersey and we're 100% giving everything for them. Yeah, I'd also love to have Mini Dlamini on my back too, hey? Listen, I want to hear from you personally when you were playing rugby, you know, what is the support and love of fans? How does it help you in terms of just your mentality when you prep, match day performance? Does it really affect you? Um, I used to love it, you know. Um, well, I'll give you an example at the Sharks, you know, they have a very special, you can travel the world, any team will tell you, um, 
The after match at the Sharks is probably the best oh, in the yeah. world. Um, you got everyone parked on the two KP1 and KP2 fields. The players have a little section and like, you know, the fans can come, you know, anyone can come in. You'd often walk out and they're just groups of kids running around and you know, it's quite special. You get a, you know, a chance to mingle with people. They get to see that you're actually normal. Yeah. Um, you know, your rugby players are come and some people can't talk to you because they can't believe it. But, but you're their hero. You know, but it's, you try and explain to them that you, you're just a normal guy. Yeah. You just play a bit of rugby on the side and yeah. you know, we used to love it. You know, it, it means a lot to the players. You know, you can actually feel it when the crowd does get behind you. It does help a lot. Sure. You know, every rugby player out there definitely appreciates you know, all the support that they do get. Of course, what is sport without the, oh, what is sport great. without the supporters, right? Um, now, what is, what is uh, support, or what is sport and you being good at sport without the support of your family? Yeah. Your dad was a professional rugby player. Yes. Did you get the feeling that there was a pressure put on you to follow in his footsteps by any chance? Absolutely none. Oh, really? No. Okay, so this was Zero. all from you. I think maybe growing up seeing him, you know, you know, I remember reading school reports when I was like five years old six years old, rugby ball getting thrown in, nice to go crazy, you know, just get the ball type thing. And maybe that was something just from watching my dad play when I was younger. Maybe it just got something inside of me. But I loved it, you know, I never even thought of being a professional rugby player up until after oh. school, you know, like even in school, I just knew I loved it and I was gonna do it. Came to St. Cillian's Rugby Festival and then Hans Scruber from the Sharks Academy approached me and said, you know, would you like to come? Wow. You know, I had offers from Cape Town, Poch, and a few different places and you know, my mom kind of put her foot down and said, Durban, she's based there, all close by and you know, see how it goes and you know, I ended up... Where and I here you are. So, wow. Great. Amazing. I mean, you've had a fantastic run, you know, from um, being the skipper of the Lions, playing at the Sharks, uh, playing for the Springboks, you went and played J-League, uh, Red Hurricanes. Um, you have probably quite a few highlights, but what are the few that really made it to, uh, to the books for you? Um, on field or field? I think both. <laughs> I mean, because uh, it, the, the sport's not just about on the field. There's so much that happens oh, outside, so right? Much. Um, you know, I think if you ask any rugby player, it's the team. You know, they, yeah. the players around them. You miss that that unbelievable environment. Yeah. You know, you just together from when you open your eyes, you having breakfast together, you spend the whole day together. Yeah. You know, on tour, you four weeks. You know, um, we had amazing Curry Cup wins. You know, scoring your first try in Wales, you know. Yes, that actually was your just big moment. Standing, I promise you, one of the best things is if you ever get a chance is to go and watch a game in Wales. You right. know, the crowd is, like, you actually feel them singing. Every single person, like, sings. Was the this the Millennium time. Stadium? Yes. It's, yeah. it's world class. Um, but it'd be tough, you know. I've just, yeah, you know, I've loved it, you know. Coming from the Sharks, the Lions, Unbelievable vibe, yeah. um, you know, from top. I ended up training with under 21s, right. you know, the Vodacom guys. So, you know, from the like, you know, it's a great bunch of guys. Um, the camaraderie is yeah, incredible. Yeah, that's, sure. that's what helps a lot. You'll see yeah. any any team that's doing well, it's from the top to the bottom, that team is like one big family. Absolutely, and, that's beautiful. Uh, I've got so many stories. So, <laughs> so many stories. Yeah. All right, well, I, I know that you play Craven Week, right? Now, obviously, it, it uh, kicked off on Monday. Yes. And, you know, Craven Week is known to be a fantastic platform for all the young talent to really showcase their skills. But it's also great for our Super Sport crew to do the same thing. So we had Shimmy and Vaynon Willis put in some hard hours uh, and do some good work. Except Vaynon didn't realize that it was all in the name of fun. Take a look. Finally, we've bound down to the final day. World Cup rugby as it is, South Africa versus New Zealand. Shimmy, it's, this is one of the most important days in the history of rugby. How do you feel about this World Cup this far? Look, everyone knows it's important. Tell me some, there's been a few displays, you know, New Zealand, you know, one of the teams that's always been your top teams winning the World Cup. Where do you see South Africa, if they could possibly win this World Cup, where do you see them winning it? In the scrums. What about the line -out? Just the scrums. Okay, looking at you know a few of the areas in the Springboks during the pool games, is there specific you know kind of games that you felt that they really struggled? Um, yeah, I don't really focus on that. Uh. Would you focus on something differently, from this from perspective of their game? Yeah, I'm not sure. What What do you think? Well, I think there's certain areas. If you look at their set pieces, I think their set pieces were quite strong. That's why I asked you. Do you feel their set pieces were quite strong throughout the World Cup? Uh, yeah, but you answered my question, so I'm not really sure what you're asking me. 
Well, looking at the final, as we're going on to the final right now, uh, who's the specific players that will really stand out for you within this final? Not really sure. Probably for me, the front row. Yeah. And do you think France standing at 12, do you think that was the right decision by Rossi? But he didn't play today. It was Damien Dallander. On 13. <laughs> 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 I was told to do that. But... <laughs> Guys, is this a prank? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Poor Vaynon just thought he had the worst day at the office. He was like, what is wrong with Shimmy? We are live, dude. Yeah. Listen, I don't trust those guys. You never know if they're being legit or playing Not prank. Anyone that's played rugby, oh. expect a prank. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta expect oh, you a prank. Expect so. did, you, have you, did you ever like have those kind of things in your camp when you were playing, boys always playing pranks on you, oh, on time. each other? You know, I could tell you stories where touring New Zealand, buying masks, waiting in guys' rooms. Oh, God. You know, you could... I'll tell you something, in a lot of those hotels, if you sit on your knees in front of the door and they look through the keyhole, they can't see you sitting there. So you could knock and knock and knock and they'd eventually get up and then they open the door and then there's someone. <laughs> you know, so Heinrich Brasso and myself, we had a lot of fun. Scaring, okay. uh, scaring a lot of people. Ah, uh, so you were the yeah, prankster, no, were you? Yes. Oh, it's going to be lots no, of fun. Lots of good great, memories, right? With memories. the boys, I'm great. sure. So listen, you know, Craven Week, um, we have so many different tournaments in South Africa that really build um, local talent, young talent. And, and, you know, we're known as a rugby nation. We eat, we sleep this thing. You were in Japan. You were based in Japan. Of course, everyone's looking at Japan because of Rugby World Cup. They're not really known for their rugby. And I think we're all very curious as to what the culture is like there. Can you fill us um, in? It's unbelievable. You know, I had the greatest time ever. It, you know, it's been six wonderful years there. Wow. And, you know, I was unfortunately, you know, I was there in the pub watching when South Africa played Japan and lost. Um, oh, we all kind of remember that the day. The entire pub we made sure to remind me that we <laughs> lost. Um, and then I promise you, from that point, yeah. you could get onto a train and you'd see people sitting with a a rugby rules book. No. Yeah, many people. You'd see them now. I don't even think South see. Africans do that. <laughs> no, they were studying, but I think a lot of people didn't know what rugby, rugby was. was. You right. know, it's baseball, soccer. Sure. It's an American bias. Or westernized. Yeah, oh, it's western. sumo wrestling, right? Yes, yeah, sumo is massive. Yeah. Um, but then I promise you, from having a thousand or five thousand people there watching, all company employees, what? you play against Yamaha, who Goromaru was, you know, the famous guy from yeah. Japan. At that stage, 40,000 people sold out. Wow. You know, so that win, I think, kick-started this whole new rugby. era. Yeah, it's a different era. Um, they're pumping money. You can see they're making a lot of English um, translations across all the different train stations, the stops, right. every small town. And I think the, the entire country is kind of gearing for this, you That's know, right. massive spectacle. I think it's going to be unbelievable. Did you enjoy your time there? Loved it. Yeah? Yes. Six years, would you ever go back? I'd go back immediately. I'll go back tomorrow. I'd... Wow. Yes, no, it was great. You know, the people are unbelievable. Um, so respectful, no matter what they do. Mm -hmm. You know, whether they, as I told you earlier, whether they're cleaning the streets or they're the CEO of a company, um, you know, they're all proud of their little piece that they have to look after. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's completely different. It's hard to explain to someone. You know, okay. you've got to go there and actually experience, experience it and understand um, it for yourself. Yeah, it's great. If, uh, do you have any advice for the boys that are going to be going over to play in the Rugby World Cup and just in, in terms of conditions and, of course, even culture? Um, yeah, I'll cover up your tattoos. They don't <laughs> yes, like that. they don't like that. Um, I'll kick you out of a couple of places, actually. I know if wow. you stopped. No onsen for you if you've got a tattoo showing. That's right. Onsen is like hot springs. So that's a big part of Japanese culture where every day or at least once a week, the whole family will go to the hot springs. And yeah. like you said, people won't no. allow you in. No, they'll stop you. Yeah. Or, um, yeah um, I don't know. There's, you know, going in the October now, it's going to be quite hot still, extremely humid. It's like Durban right. when you get there. So I'm not sure. I think it might be... Yeah. Yeah. You have to see it. That's it's un, you know, just go out there and enjoy it. Um, yeah.
There's so much. There's so much, right? There's so, There's much. so much. Well, ladies and gents, yeah. it is 78 days away until the Rugby World Cup does kick off in Japan, the land of the rising sun. We all want to get into the mood. And to do that, we have our next episode of Japan 101. So let's roll it. We're back for another episode of Japan 101 and today we've decided to delve into the world of Japanese fashion. Now we're going to be taking a look at traditional Japanese female attire, of course you know it as kimono. And with me I have Yoko-san. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Hajimemashite. Hajimemashite. Now she is a traditional Japanese cultural expert and she'll be helping me put on a kimono, turn me into a Japanese princess. I'm so ready. Yoko-san, ready to start? Hi. Hi. Let's go. This is Nagajiban. This is a second layer. This is very important. You don't see after you, know, you wear in kimono, but look at the detail that you, even we don't see, we care. And also this is super, super important. And uh, depend on how much we live here, and we can tell the um, um, what you are, how you are. And Lila is you know super sexy lady, but you don't want to be too sexy. So I think the misconception is that only women wear kimono, but that's not true. That's not true. Men wear kimono as well. Right. Yes, so you can enjoy. Um, if you're a man or if you're yes. a woman. It, yes. Does it look the same? Is it similar? No, it's more like a navy, uh, black, um, mm -hmm. not to this pattern or anything. This is the last part, the obi. There is also something called yukata, yes. uh, which I think some people get confused and think it's also a kimono. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between yukata and kimono? Uh, kimono is a very casual summer um, type of kimono. Okay. So you can enjoy easily, you can wash easily. Mm -hmm. So this, you know, you cannot wash even like a dry clean, you have to go special dry cleaner. Wow, kimono really is incredible. I mean, there's something about it when you put it on, I don't know, I feel like such a lady. Um, the fabric is just incredible. It's so beautiful, it feels so good on my skin. And I love the fact that they have little hints of pink everywhere. As you can tell, it's all about the detail. We've learned how to put on kimono. I've struggled to breathe, but you know what? It's all worth it when I looked in the mirror and realized how elegant and how beautiful kimono really is. It's been a fantastic experience. This ninja has been kimonified. Oh man. Uh, Japanese culture. We're busy discussing yes. this now about Japanese culture and how you, you actually had to have two lessons a week. Yes, it's, it's compulsory. At the club, they want you to at least attempt to, to learn Japanese. Just okay. try, you know, yeah. and you can see they really appreciate it if you, you know, put the effort. Yeah, put the effort into their culture yeah. and give it a go. Show them respect, you know, because that's all Japanese culture is about is just respect. And, um, you know, you put a bit of effort in and it pays off. And it pays off, right? Yeah. What was the one thing about Japanese culture that you absolutely love and you miss so much now that you're back here? Um, I'd say everything works, you know. Yeah. Um, Everyone's doing their own thing, they're minding their own business. And you know, like I said the other side, it's they yeah, it's 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 just, it's just know, I know. It's, it's so hard to put words, into words. Um, I know. Um, they're does. such great people, they they really put their you know, you'll be walking around trying to find a place, someone mm. will just randomly walk up to you and say like, no, cool, it's this way, and they'll take you there. They'll take you there, they'll actually you go know? out of their way. Yes. They might be going the opposite way, but Completely. they'll take you there. And it's, yeah. Yeah, oh, it's just a great country, you know, I've made some I great friends that. there, it's unbelievable. Fantastic, I'm so glad that you had a good yes. experience. Now, Thank Ryan, you. before I let you go, yes. I have one more request from you. We yes. always ask our guests about their Super Brew predictions. So, of course, it is the final of the Super Rugby yes. uh, season. It is the Jaguares versus the Crusaders, the big mm. showdown. So, we want to find out from you, who do you think is going to take it? It is in New Zealand. Yeah. And by how much do you think they'll take it? Uh, my heart... You know, the Crusaders generally always come up with some plan right. to take them out. You know, um, I believe they do have one or two injuries this week. Yes, they Ryan do. Ryan Crody and there's someone else that's out. So, I don't know, they, they've got an amazing system. The depth always steps up when they, they get into it. And um, 
You know, you have to go with home ground advantage. Fair enough, the Jaguars, it's an international side. So I think it's going to be one hell of a test. And I think it will be a close game. So probably like seven, six points to the Crusaders. To the Crusaders? Yeah. Yeah, listen, I'm so rooting for the underdog. I am totally behind the Jaguars. Crossing yeah. fingers that they do well. But time will tell. Make sure that you check it out. It will be on your screens this Saturday at 9.35 on Supersport 1. Your World of Champions. Ryan, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank, Thank you so you. much for hanging Thank you out for with us. Having me. Ah, that's it's actually great. great. I want to chat to you more now about <laughs> Japan. So when we wrap up here, ladies and gents, we will see you again next week. Until then, enjoy your weekend of sport. Goodbye. Yes. <laughs>